Dave Rubin is a very stupid person, but I think he's at least smart enough to realize that his right-wing audience that used to enjoy basic conservative arguments, they're shifting further and further to the right. I think that the right in America is collectively shifting further and further to the right. And if you're a political commentator on the right and you want to satiate their appetite for right-wing commentary, you've got to get a little bit more extreme yourself. You can't just use these old uh, arguments about taxes and small government. You actually have to get a little bit more racist, be a little bit more explicit in the way you pander and uh, appeal to racists and white supremacists. And this is what we're going to see Dave Rubin do for, I think, the first time. So he's not going to use a new argument, right? He's going to deny institution, institutional racism in this clip that we're about to watch. And he's done this before, so it's not new. But what we're going to see here is he's going to tweak his argument, tweak the rhetoric that he uses, change some words ever so slightly so you can barely notice. But this shift is just enough to appeal more directly to a very specific group of people. White nationalists. And if you accept his argument if you buy what he's selling you then the implication is oh my god white people are under attack i mean this is uh tucker carlson's grift lately right there's uh the great replacement and whites are being erased so if you listen to what dave rubin is saying and tucker carlson you start to really form this idea in your head that oh my god if white people are under attack what do we do it's almost like we need our own state maybe a white ethno state Unfortunately for Dave Rubin, uh, I don't think that he himself wants this since gays are not welcome, uh, but I don't necessarily think that his rhetoric, in his opinion, is going to lead to his supporters, his viewers wanting this, because I think that he believes there's a limit to the right's radicalization, right? You can only shift so far to the right and then you hit a wall, except as we've seen with Donald Trump over the last year, there is no wall. Trump threatened to use the Insurrection Act to violently crush protests, and they wanted that to happen. Republican legislatures across the country are cracking down on voting rights, criminalizing protests, and Republicans love that. So you only become uh, you know, so extreme to where you just start outright advocating for authoritarianism and democracy is no longer compatible with your ideology. And that's what we're seeing from right-wingers, and I don't think that Dave Rubin even realizes that he is contributing to this. You know, it, it might be subconscious, but he knows that he's got he's to gotta get a little bit more extreme to stay relevant. And uh, this is what we're going to see in this clip. Take a look. Man, well, first of all, I want to congratulate AOC because we played a video of her yesterday where she had complete word salad and nothing she said made anything close to any sort of sensible sentence. So I'll give you credit where it's due, lady. Um, but, meaning that she did string together a couple words that kind of made sense there, but it was all drivel, everything that she said there. First off, we do not have systemic and institutional racism. There are no laws in the United States that are racist against any one person. By the way, I do believe that the woke left, that the progressives will instigate laws that will be racist against people. They will start having anti-white laws. This is not a crazy conspiracy theory. There are four quotas already. We know that they don't want a certain amount of Asian people because they're overrepresented at Harvard. Well, these are the places where do all these bad ideas that leak out into society, they start at the university level. So if you're going to say we in the government, we are going to have diversity and inclusion departments where we are going to hire based on the color of skin, then you are going to discriminate against a certain set of people, which in most cases will be white people, right? It will mostly be white people. It will be Asian people as well, obviously. Now, this clip was posted to Twitter by Jason Campbell, and I don't know what AOC clip in particular Dave Rubin is referencing. Um, I think that if you say sometimes AOC is not clear and even uses uh, word salad to describe things, uh, I think that that's fair, right? The Israel-Palestine interview comes to mind. I want her to do better. I want her to do uh, more research and become more well-versed to really speak intelligently about these very important issues related to foreign policy, Israel-Palestine. Having said all of that, though, if I'm Dave Rubin and I spew nonsense and vomit out the dumbest, most banal bullshit on a daily basis, am I ever going to point out somebody else's word salad and stupidity? 
Mm -mm. I'm keeping my mouth shut about that. (laughs) Because Dave Rubin, how many times have we clowned on him for not just making incoherent arguments, but just saying things that are downright fucking stupid? I mean, this is the man who coined the term high level ideas. He literally said, my brain brain is going into recovery recovery mode from taking in so many important high level ideas. Who says things like that? That's stupid, that's weird. Ideas. So uh, he should never ever criticize anyone else for having word salad uh, until he stops vomiting out word salad himself. But moving on to the substance of his argument here, you have to be a simpleton to accept his argument. So he denies the existence of institutional and systemic racism. And the basis for that, the grounds to deny the existence of institutional racism is because there's no law on the books in America that explicitly is racist. There's no law that says black people can make $6 an hour, whereas white people can make $7.25 an hour because white people are superior. There's no law of that nature. Except the world is not black and white, and this analysis, to even say that it's elementary, would be a little bit of an insult to elementary school children because I think even they have more rational and critical thinking skills than that. So to Dave Rubin, he can see our entire drug war, our racist criminal justice system, he can see that even though whites and blacks use drugs at comparable rates, blacks are statistically much, much more likely to get jailed for doing drugs than their white peers. But you see, that's not actually evidence of institutional racism because the drug laws in America don't specifically say that police officers have to lock up blacks more so than than white people. Until it says that, then sorry, you've got no evidence of institutional racism. Wash your hands. Case closed. There's no other macro or micro factors you have to look into. We don't have to look at socioeconomic conditions, whether or not police officers uh, patrol black and brown communities at higher rates than white communities and wealthier communities. All of that is, uh, is moot because the law doesn't say anything that leads us to believe it's explicitly racist. And even if the outcome itself is racist, the law doesn't say that uh, it's racist, so case closed, checkmate. Who thinks like this? This is idiotic logic. It's the lack of logic. It's the absence of logic. It's so irrational and stupid to think this way that there's no way he actually believes this. Like, this is a man that used to be a liberal. So I think that he knows at least some of the details, some of the arguments, some of the rationalizations that prove that institutional racism is a thing because it is, but I I don't know. Maybe he's playing more of a character. Maybe he's playing up his ignorance. I'm not sure. But either way, it's fucking dumb. Now, um, he says, by the way, I do believe the woke left, the progressives will instigate laws that will be racist against people. They will start having anti-white laws now i need you to understand that saying anti-white that is a change right it might be subtle and a lot of folks might not notice it but he's not saying maybe we'll start seeing reverse racism he's invoking the white identity very specifically and yes he does claim to be against identity politics uh, frequently but he's using the word white and that's intentional that's very very intentional because He's speaking to white people. Hey, you're under attack. And the evidence, well, he doesn't have much evidence, but the one example he cites is affirmative action. And it's convenient that he denies the existence of institutional racism because contrary to popular belief, affirmative action is about addressing institutional racism. It's not about advantaging or privileging black and brown and minority communities against white Americans. What affirmative action aims to do is make education and jobs more equitable. Make it so that way historically disadvantaged communities who didn't have access to capital 
They didn't have access to opportunities to actually find well-paying jobs and get a college education. Make sure they actually have a fighting chance. And so it doesn't mean that if you apply to a college and if you are African-American, you're going to get admitted over a white person. I mean, there were cases litigated uh, to the Supreme Court that absolutely dispelled this dumb fuckery. What it means is that if you are from a marginalized community, then your identity can be part of the cluster of qualifications when used to determine your admittance into an institution or whether or not you're going to be hired as part of a job. So it's not just, oh, hey, you're black. Welcome. You're hired. That's not the way that affirmative action actually works in practice. It's OK. This person studied really hard. They did a lot of extracurricular activity. Uh, they volunteered. It seems like they're, they're really uh, their attendance was phenomenal in high school. And also they happen to be from a historically disadvantaged group whose family didn't have uh, many opportunities. Uh, that's another consideration. That's great. That's another uh, benefit to uh, accepting this individual. That's the way that it works in practice. But simpletons like Dave Rubin take it as uh, this is reverse racism. This is anti-white. <laughs> it's a caveman argument and it's fucking dumb. It's as dumb as it sounds. Dave Rubin is, uh, if anything uh, related to politics goes a little bit deeper than the surface level, he checks out. You can't go deeper than the surface level. Just analyze everything at face value, take away uh, what you think is the most obvious, even though it's the dumbest conclusion, and uh, that's it. You you rest your case. That's that's his level of political analysis. It's, it's a Marjorie Taylor Greene level of political analysis. Um. And I love how he, he very frequently on his program, he attacks the so-called woke left. Hey, Dave, uh, who was it again that fought for you to get the right to marry a man? Was it your buddy Glenn Beck? Was it any of your right-wing pals, Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro? They absolutely did not. And they still don't support your right to marry. So you should thank the woke left for making sure that you're a little bit more equal. And the tacit reverse racism argument that you're using, Dave, to pander to white nationalists, this is what your right-wing buddies still use against the LGBTQ plus community, your own community, dummy. Do you know why Mike Huckabee is against the Equality Act? It's because he says that it will grant gays special rights. And with these special rights, they're gonna be on a higher footing than their heterosexual and cisgender counterparts. So because businesses in America, if the Equality Act were to pass, could no longer discriminate on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation, that's actually special rights. And because the LGBTQ plus community is getting these special rights, we're actually the ones who are getting oppressed. Businesses are being discriminated against if they can't discriminate on the basis of gender identity and sexual orientation. And if that sounds familiar, it's because this is the same argument that Dave Rubin repeatedly uses against affirmative action. It's the same logic behind him denying institutional racism. Now, Dave Rubin, conveniently enough, he probably wouldn't support the Equality Act because he said before that if there was some uh, business owner that was Christian and didn't want to bake him and his husband a cake for whatever, uh, that he'd just go to another uh, cake uh, or baker or whatever, a cake decorator. Uh, except you live in California. You live in Southern California, don't you? in a very rich area, I don't think you're gonna run into issues. So it's really easy for you to talk the talk when you haven't walked the walk. You haven't lived as a gay man who's out and proud in Mississippi or Alabama. That's who laws like the Equality Act would actually affect. But getting back to his point uh, and getting back to this discussion about, quote, anti-white policies and reverse racism, what this really is about is if we end institutional racism, and if we make it so that way black Americans are on more equal footing with whites, not given special rights, just equality, then that's bad for white people like Dave Rubin who want to sit at the tippy top of the social hierarchy. I mean, not having more privilege than black Americans in every single conceivable way, to them, that's oppression. To them, that makes them the victim. To them, they cry and they claim it's reverse racism. Affirmative action is reverse racism because I no longer am privileged over people who are historically denied to what I haven't had as much as uh, of an issue accessing. So Dave Rubin is a fucking clown who uh, doesn't realize what he's doing here. 
You might want to pander to white nationalists to make a few bucks. But if right-wingers got what they wanted, if your ideology was imposed on society, your ideology would exclude you, dipshit. It would exclude your husband. So I, I just, I don't understand how, given his position as a gay man, he can be so uh, obtuse about this. But I don't necessarily think he uh, is unaware of it. I think he's being purposefully obtuse because right now, at least, it's really convenient because you could shill for the right and you could buy a mansion. You can uh, have probably some really fancy luxury cars. You can live the life of celebrities. Uh, but in the end, what he's doing is damage. And even though he's a dumbass, he's at least aware that he is hurting himself. And he has to live with that every single day. And I don't think any amount of money can erase that from somebody's conscious. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.